Kiora, hello, namaste, ni hao. This is Prashant and we shall be continuing with our 14 minute series of labs and discussions. This video has been created for you to understand the theory of how antivirus services work in Fortinet devices. This is lab 10 in the Fortinet uh, Security Guide Operating System 6.2 uh, series and the details of the labs are mentioned on page 169 till 180 in the lab guide. This video shall cover the antivirus, antivirus basics and how the different modes of antivirus work in uh, Fortinet devices. Uh, this video will assist you in better understanding the lab. The virtual machines you need to use for this lab are Linux, Forti Manager, Local Forti Gate, and Local Windows. Uh, if you watch this video and read through the guide, it should take you approximately 20 minutes to complete the lab on your machine. At the end of completing the lab, there are two questions and one upload you need to do on Moodle. For those of you who are using the virtual system, it's essential that prior to starting this lab, they restore the original file to local 40 gate firewall from the folder on local Windows virtual machine desktop, that is resources, initial lab environment configuration, and upload the file local initial.config. This file will reset all firewall conditions and you will not have a problem in the network. If you configure the details as per instruction while doing the lab, the local 40 gate config files are located in the resources security antivirus folder as mentioned in your lab guide. After completing uh, this lab, uh, you should be able to achieve the objective shown here. Primarily use the antivirus signatures, review antivirus scanning techniques, uh, enable the 40 sandbox with antivirus, and that's an important part of uh, you when you're configuring a new system, and differentiate between the available 40 guard signature databases. Let us first understand what is an antivirus and how does it work. Now, effectively, an antivirus is a database of virus signatures that is used to identify infections. During an antivirus scan, in order to be detected as a virus, the virus must first match a defined pattern called a signature. Now, different vendors assign different names to the same virus. All vendors use the attack vector designation in the virus name. The vector comes at the beginning of a virus name. Some examples could be, say, W32, which represents a 32-bit windows, W64, which represents a 64-bit windows, uh, JS, capital JS, it could uh, represent the JavaScript, which is a cross-platform issue. Now, some vendors also use patterns as part of the virus name. Some patterns detect only one virus per pattern. Other patterns are more flexible and can detect multiple viruses per pattern. The pattern that the vendor uses depends upon the vendor engine. A host-based uh, antivirus software, such as a 40 client or maybe McAfee, can help at the host level. However, host-based antivirus software cannot be installed on routers. Uh, also, guest Wi-Fi networks and ISP customers might not have antivirus software installed at all. So how can you protect guest networks, ISP customers, and your own network from malware threats? Now, to answer the question I asked you at the end of the last slide. Like viruses, which use many methods to avoid detections, 48 as a device uses many techniques to detect viruses. Now these detection techniques could include an antivirus scan. This is the first, fastest, simplest way to detect malware or a virus. It detects viruses that are an exact match for a signature in the antivirus database. The other method is a grayware scan. Now, this scan detects unsolicited programs known as grayware that have been installed without the user's knowledge or consent. Grayware is not technically a virus. It is often bundled with innocuous software, but does not uh, does have unwanted side effects. So it is categorized as a malware. Often, uh, grayware can be detected with a simple 40 yard grayware signature. Finally, you have something called as a heuristic scan. Now, uh, these scans are based on probability. So they increase the possibility of false positives, but they are also detect zero-day viruses. 
Now, zero-day viruses are viruses that are new, unknown, and therefore have no existing associated signature. If your network is a frequent target, enabling a heuristic scan may be worth the performance cost because it can help you detect a virus before the outbreak begins. By default, when the antivirus scans heuristic engine detects a virus-like characteristic, it logs the file as a suspicious but does not block it. You can choose whether to block or allow suspicious files. The heuristic scan is an optional feature that has to be enabled by CLI in a FortiGate device. You can configure the action for the heuristic scan to pass, block, disable using the CLI command config antivirus heuristics. If all antivirus features are enabled, FortiGate applies the following scanning order as mentioned here. Antivirus scan, grayware scan, heuristic scan. I would like you to remember this order. What if heuristic scans are too uncertain? What if you need a more sophisticated, uh, more certain way to detect malware and find zero-day viruses? Now you can integrate your antivirus scan with a Forti Sandbox. For environments that require more certainty, Forti Sandbox executes the file within a protected environment or a protected virtual machine. Then examine the side effects of the software to see if it is dangerous. For example, let's say you have two files. Both alter the system registry and are therefore suspicious. One is a driver installation, its behavior is normal. But the second file installs a virus that connects to a botnet command and control server. Sandboxing would reveal the difference. A FortiGate can be configured to receive a supplementary signature database from Forti Sandbox based on the sandbox results. Let us check a little bit more about how sandboxing works. Now, FortiOS is smart when it comes to determining what files are sent to Forti Sandbox. FortiGuard provides FortiGate with information based on the correct current threat climate that is used to determine if a file should be deemed suspicious or not. FortiGate provides the administrator with granular control when it comes to determining what type of file or files are sent to the Forti Sandbox for further investigation. Administrator also have the option to use the Forti Sandbox database in conjunction with the FortiGuard antivirus database to enhance their network security. Now, prior to uh, Forti OS 6.2, which is the version that you are using, enabling suspicious files only feature was available using the CLI mode only. Now, you can do that even using the GUI. Now let's talk a little bit about the antivirus signature database. Now you can update your FortiGate antivirus database, uh, database using a push method, a schedule method, or both the methods. Scheduled updates allow you to configure sh scheduled updates at regular intervals, which are hourly, daily, or maybe um, on a weekly basis. Now you can also enable accept push updates, which allow you to add new definitions as soon as they are released by the FortiGuard. This is useful for high security environments because FortiGate will receive urgent security updates as soon as they are released. However, it will have some impact on the busyness or the load on the FortiGate. Regardless of which method you select, you must enable virus scanning in at least one firewall policy. Otherwise, FortiGuard will not download any updates. Alternatively, you can download packages from the Fortinet's customer service and support websites that require a subscription. Your machines have the requisite subscription in place. You can verify the update status and signature versions from the FortiGuard page or on the GUI, or you can run diagnose auto update status and diagnose auto update version on the CLI. Starting uh, FortiOS 6.2 that you are using, the mobile malware version is part of your signature. Now, multiple FortiGuard antivirus databases exist and can be configured using the CLI command config antivirus settings option. Support for each database type varies by the model that you're using. Now, all FortiGate devices include the normal database. Uh, these normal databases contain signatures for viruses that have been detected in recent ones and determined by the FortiGuard Global Security Research Team. It is the smallest database and therefore performs a faster scan. 
However, this database does not detect all known viruses. Most FortiGate models support the extended database. That is the second type of form. The extended database detects viruses that are no longer active. Many common platforms are still vulnerable to these viruses or these viruses could be an issue later. Now the extreme database is intended for use in high security environments. The extreme database detects all known viruses known till that point in time, including ones targeted at legacy operating systems that are no longer widely used. There's also a compact signature database that is used for only quick scanning mode. You will learn more about it as you do this lab today. A quick word about how the FortiGuard protection service actually works. And it works in primarily do two things. First is the virus outbreak prevention. FortiGuard virus outbreak prevention is an additional layer of protection that keeps networks safe from newly emerging malware. Quick virus outbreaks can infect the network before signatures can be developed to stop them. Outbreak protection stop these virus outbreaks until signature becomes available in FortiGuard. FortiGate must have a zero R virus outbreak or ZHVO license before it can send the query in real time to FortiGuard, thus preventing a zero R virus attack. FortiGate adds hash based virus detection for new threats that are not yet detected by the AV signatures. When the file is sent, the scan unit daemons buffers a hashed optionally you know, extracting the archive content and a request or several, depending on number of files that is scanned in the archive, is sent to an unfiltered daemon. After checking against this requested cache for known signatures, the URL filtered daemon sends an antivirus request to FortiGuard with the remaining signature. The FortiGuard returns a rating that is used to determine if the scan unit daemon should report the file as harmful or not. The jobs remain suspended in the scan unit daemon until, until the client receives a response or the request times up. Now this is a continuous process and happens with every uh, 40, uh, 40 device that has 40 guard protection enabled. The second method is about content disarm and reconstruction is also called as CDR. The CDR uh, removes exploitable content and replaces it with content that it is known to be safe. As files are processed through an enabled antivirus profile, Contents that found to be malicious or unsafe is replaced with content that allows traffic to continue, but doesn't put the recipient at risk. Content that can be scanned includes PDF and Microsoft Office files, leaving the networks on the CDR supported protocol, which are HTTP web downloads, SMTP email send, IMAP and POP3 email retrieval. Please remember that MAPI isn't supported. When the client tries to download the file, FortiGate removes all exploitable content in real time. Then the original find, uh, file is sent to FortiSandbox for inspection. The client can download the original file by logging into the FortiSandbox. This feature works even if the FortiSandbox is not configured, but only if you want to discard the original file. So, time for a quick knowledge check. First question, if antivirus, grayware, and heuristic scans are enabled, in what order are they performed? Please review this and you can post your answers on the chat. Question two, which database can be manually selected for use in antivirus scanning? Let's now have a look at what the various antivirus scanning modes are. Whether the antivirus is operating in flow based or proxy based inspection modes, uh, two scanning modes options are always available full scan mode and quick scan mode. Now, full scan mode uses the full antivirus database that is normal, extended, or extreme, depending on what is configured in the CLI. And the IPS engine to examine the network traffic. The flow inspection mode engine starts scanning with the raw packet. The engine does not necessarily scan in order and it must extract the payload to discover the viral payloads, regardless of surrounding protocol details. Because the file is transmitted simultaneously, flow inspection mode scanning consumes more CPU cycles. 
However, depending on the FortiGate model, some flow inspection mode operations may be performed by a specialized FortiASIC or FortiASIC chip, which improves performance. Now, flow inspection mode scanning caches a copy of the packet locally on the FortiGate and forwards the packet to the end client at the same time. When the last packet is received, FortiGate also caches that, but puts the last packet on hold and has, uh, until the whole file has been scanned. The IPS engine checks for the rule match and then sends it to the AV engine or the antivirus engine for scanning. Two possible scenarios can occur when a virus is detected. If the scan detects a virus in the TCP session, when it may have already forwarded package to the client, it resets the connection, but doesn't insert the block replacement page. So the client may think it has encountered a network error and tries again. The FortiGate IPS engine caches the URL and during the second attempt to download the same file, the block replacement page displays immediately without engaging the antivirus engine. Even if the client has received most of the file in the first attempt, the file will be truncated and the client will not be able to open the truncated file. If the virus is detected at the start of the stream, flow inspection mode scanning can insert the block replacement page at the first attempt. Please remember, this is an important slide for you to remember and understand how antivirus actually works across various different devices, not just FortiGate, but for any of them. As you see on the figure here, it, it shows you the step-by-step -step diagrammatic process for this. Uh, the client sends a request and uh, starts receiving packets immediately, but FortiGate also caches those packets at the same time. When the last packet arrives, which is this particular packet, FortiGate caches it and puts it on hold. Then it sends the whole cached file to the IPS engine where rule match is checked and passed to the antivirus engine. So if you see here, this is where the antivirus engine packing actually happens. Uh, if a virus is found, the last packet is dropped. Even if the client has received most of the file, the file will be truncated and the client will not be able to open a truncated file. Regardless of which mode you use, the scan techniques give similar detection rates. How can you choose between the scan engine? Now, if performance is your top priority, then flow inspection is more appropriate. If security is your top priority, then proxy inspection mode with client comforting disabled is more appropriate. Now, this slide shows an example of antivirus profile operating in flow-based inspection mode with the scan mode set to full you will be using this particular thing in your lab today. Now let's look at the quick, uh, quick scan mode packet flow. Now quick scan mode uses an IPS engine with an embedded compact antivirus database containing fewer signatures. Quick scan mode does have some limitations compared to full scanning mode in flow-based inspection mode. A quick scan mode cannot send uh, files to 40 sandbox for inspection or use advanced heuristics or use the mobile malware packages uh, however now quick mode is available for a proxy based mode of functioning of the 40 guard now have a look at the diagrammatic representation of this you will immediately be able to see the difference between how quick scan works against the flow the IPS engine examines the network traffic for viruses, worms, trojans, and malware without the need to buffer the file that is being checked. It provides better performance, but detection route obviously is lesser. Now, this slide shows an example of how antivirus profile operating in flow-based inspection mode with the scan mode set as quick works. A good use case example would be a quick mode scanning to public Wi-Fi. Note, that all inspection options, including 40 sandbox and mobile malware protections, are not applicable in quick scan mode. It is also important to know that you must enable SSL, SSH deep inspection to scan encrypted traffic. Let's now look at how the proxy inspection mode works. Now, each protocol's proxy 
picks up a connection and buffers the entire file first or waits until the oversize limit is reached, which can be set before the scanning. The client must wait for the scanning to finish. If the virus is detected, the block replacement page is displayed immediately. Because FortiGate has to buffer the whole file and then do the scanning, it takes a long time to scan. Also, from the client point of view, it has to wait for the scanning to finish and might terminate the connection due to lack of data if it's for a larger file. You can configure clients for HTTP and FTP from the config firewall profile protocol option command tree. Now this allows the proxy to slowly transmit some data until it can complete the buffer and finish the scan. This prevents a connection or session timeout. No block replacement messages appear in the first attempt as FortiGate is transmitting the packets to the end client. It does provide granularity over performance. Uh, it is weighted towards being more thorough and easily configurable. And that's the important point about this particular mode. Another quick look at, uh, the diagram, at, at the diagram of how the in proxy inspection mode packet flow actually works. When the proxy inspection scan mode, the client sends a request and FortiGate starts buffering this, uh, buffering the whole file as is shown here. It then sends it to the antivirus engine, which is here, and uh, for scanning. If the file is clean without any viruses, FortiGate starts transmitting the file to the end client. If a virus is found, no packets are delivered to the end client and proxy sends the replacement block end or a block page uh, back to the client. Now here is an example of what the antivirus profile looks like in proxy inspection mode. You have to note that you need to apply the antivirus profile to a firewall policy to scan the desired traffic for viruses. You must also need to enable the SSL SSH deep inspection to scan the encrypted traffic. Now, please give it a minute and have a look at this slide that provides comparison of different antivirus scanning modes. It's self, it's evident and self-explanatory, but please give it a moment. So before we end this particular video, a quick knowledge check. Uh, question one, what two scanning modes are available in flow-based inspection mode? Proxy and next generation firewall, B, full and quick. Question number two, what antivirus database does quick scan mode use? Compact or extended? Uh, please uh, fill in your answers here on uh, the chat. Awesome. 